This video series was produced as a guide to those who are building the GT5 Halcyon, a single-ended EL84 5W tube amp with an active Baxendale treble mid-bass tone stack. Follow the link in the description for these particular plans and for other tube amp plan packs. This video concentrates on the filament winding. If you turn on your amp and you hear a crash test dummy song before you even plug in your guitar, chances are you got filament wiring problems. Trouble is, wiring filaments can be a very difficult and frustrating part of the build. And what is a filament winding? It's the wire pair that comes out of your transformer that's responsible for lighting up your tube. All we've got to know is, is that they carry 50 cycle hum which is a large magnetic field that builds and collapses approximately 50 times a second. And if this gets induced into your signal, then your amp's going to sound like some kind of meditation device. There are a few ways that we can get rid of this potentially catastrophic hum, but the easiest by far is if we just simply twist the wires together. Sounds simple enough, but we can really stuff this up. Let's have a look at a couple of incorrect ways to run your filament wires, then let's check out some preferred methods. This is probably the most common incorrect way that a socket can be wired. The problem here is the loop that goes around the socket. Let's turn on the transformer and have a look at what the magnetic field might look like. Now let's have a look at the sensitive parts of the socket. You can see that the magnetic field encroaches on the grid and plate areas. As this is where the signal is found, it is not ideal. This is an even worse situation. You can see that in this configuration, we've got a large magnetic field that circles the whole socket. This can't be good. I've been guilty of this pattern myself. Here we've got a large magnetic loop at the bottom of the socket. Not good at all. This is a far better layout and one of the preferred ways to wire the filaments to the socket. It has a very low magnetic footprint and there are no loops. Here is another preferred way to wire your twisted filaments and the method that I chose for this build. Again, there is a low magnetic footprint and there are no loops. I'm not going to go into huge detail about the chassis holes or the turret board as I covered that in a previous video and you can find the link in the description. However, here's a small montage of what I did before we get to the filaments. Side note, if you're after a decent swage tool, you can do no better than the old brace countersink bit. It swages the bottom of the turret in the most magical way. I like to raise the high tension components above the rest of the circuit. But in the past I found this a little bit difficult and awkward, so I've come up with a solution. Super turrets, and I'm not talking about the HMS Neptune. I'm talking extra high turrets, ones that you can really wrap your gear around. For my super turrets, 
I'm using M2 by 0.4 by 20 millimeter Phillips pan head machine screws in A2 stainless steel and they are the bomb. I take a regular turret and I put it in my big round knob era record vise even though I could probably use a much smaller one and I take the turret down to about 7 millimeters. I built these mainly for the high tension line but you can use these anywhere there's a turret that's really busy. They fit nice and snug into existing turrets and they're not hard to make. And here's the real bonus of my brace bit countersink swage tool. I don't need a lock washer. I put the super turrets on the turret board where I think I'll need them but I'll add and subtract them when the need arises. I built an off chassis mounting jig and I've put a wee board at the back there which accommodates for both the indicator lamp and the input jack. I like to use quarter inch MDF for my whole drilling template as I can simply turn it over and then use that template in my chassis jig. Make sure that you have the correct view template. The way to tell is that when the template is in the jig, the transformer holes are to your left. You don't have to use the transformer specified in the plans pack. You can use any transformer with similar specifications. I like to use the transformers out of these old tube radios. If you're not sure what thickness filament wire to use, one little trick is to locate the filament wires on the transformer and measure one of them. The filament wires are usually the thickest wire pair on the transformer. As long as you're using cable that is the same thickness or thicker, you're all good. I like to use solid core cable because it retains its shape when you bend it. You can use transformer winding wire, but this has an enamel coating and it's very tricky to remove when you're trying to solder it on a socket. If you can find it, soft annealed bare copper cable is best. If you're using cotton cloth covered cable, I wouldn't recommend terminating with heat shrink because it gets too thick when you're on the socket lug. For this amp, I made my own insulation. I took off the cotton cloth and I applied 1.6mm polyolefin heat shrink. I found that the polyolefin worked really well. It was easy to strip back on the socket. However, you have to be extremely careful because it's a lot softer than other insulation. I'm giving myself a wee bit of slack here because the filaments from the transformer still have to come into the chassis and be twisted in onto the same turrets. So far so good, but the fun really begins at the indicator lamp because the realization hits you that this is going to be very frustrating. So what I suggest is that you just take a deep breath, have a cup of tea and a lie down if you have to, because everything is going to be all right. For ultimate hum cancellation, I'm starting at the point where the filament wires enter the chassis and I'm running the twisted pair in one direction through the indicator lamp and then on through the sockets. At this point you have to be very careful around the tube socket lugs as they can cut into the insulation. I don't want to sound like your mum, now's the time to cut those fingernails and clean your ears out while you're at it. 
Regarding the continuation of the filament wires, I'm going to run my twisted pair through the socket. And this is my preferred method. This point of the socket wiring can be very frustrating indeed. And you can see that there is a high potential to cut the insulation on the socket lug. At this stage, I add another layer of heat shrink. And that just ensures that the socket lug isn't going to cut through the insulation. At this point, I found that the whole next section can be removed. And then I thought, well, perhaps I'll try the twisting off the jig. So I gave that a go. And it worked OK. I found that twisting the wires was much easier off the board. However, when it came to reconnecting the cable to the socket lugs, I had a lot of trouble. In the end, I found that I preferred to do the twisting on the template, on the actual socket itself. And to do this effectively, I found that if I put a little L shape in the end of the cable, it gave me a really good grip with the pliers, and it meant that the cable didn't want to pull out of its twist. If you've made it to the last socket, congratulations. Absolute liberation and relief, no doubt. Now go treat yourself to that cookie dough triple scoop ice cream. If you're like me and using a transformer without a center tap, we still have one more thing to take care of we need to create our own pseudo center tap and we can do this by running a 100 ohm resistor from either side of the filament winding to ground. The best place to do this is from each termination point of the indicator lamp. Thanks for watching. See you next time.